Vertical Sun. How dare you kill me? Zhao Kuanyin, who was adorned with swords and swords by palace guards in the palace, shouted fiercely. Your brothers have always been ungrateful and have ulterior motives. On the way back to the south, the wooden plaque that father and emperor picked up, check and be the son of heaven, is the act of the two of you. Everyone says, I doubt the country. Today, I will establish my authority by killing you too. Today, everyone knows that I am the holy emperor of China for generations. Chai Zongxuan, who has traveled through time and is only seven years old, seems to have emerged before his eyes the magnificent scene of the Song dynasty's history, which completely changed the turning point of China's decline under his rule, and the conquest of the world by the Zhou dynasty's iron hooves. Keywords of the Novel Empire of Great Zhou Opening to kill Zhao Kuanyin No Pop-Ups, Empire of Great Zhou Opening to kill Zhao Kuanyin Complete Collection Download, Empire of Great Zhou Opening to kill Zhao Kuanyin Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Apocalypse Rebirth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Apocalypse Rebirth The autumn morning sunshine is like wisps, slanting through the carved wooden windows, and every dust is clearly visible in the mid-air. Liang Xiao suddenly woke up from the palace bed of carved dragons and painted phoenixes, and was shocked to see the scene in front of him. This is an antique hall, decorated with elegant and warm atmosphere, and exquisite tables and chairs. In the center of the main hall, there is a bronze incense burner with a tiger head, and at this moment, sandalwood fragrance is rising, which is refreshing to hear. The two exquisitely dressed palace maids, aged around fourteen or five, who were standing in the palace, saw Liang Xiao wake up and immediately walked towards the big bed, bowing respectfully and saying, Your Majesty! I will wait on you to change your clothes. Liang Xiao was very curious. Seeing these two stunning girls, it didn't seem like they were acting in a TV drama or playing a prank on themselves. Just as he was about to ask, where is this? A huge pain hit his head, and memories flooded into his mind. Liang Xiao traveled through it, and it was on November 12, the sixth year of the Xianda reign of later Zhou, 959 AD. Liang Xiao was originally working as an overtime dog at a Shenzhen Futures company on a night in May 2024. Unexpectedly, after a deafening roar, a huge, mushroom cloud rose up in the city center, causing him to close his eyes and unable to look directly. Just as I shouted, finished, in my heart, I lost consciousness until now when I wake up. At this time, Emperor Shizong of Zhou, Chai Rong, had already died of illness on June 19. At the age of only seven, King Chai Zongxuan of Liang ascended to the throne in front of Chai Rong's spirit. In August of the same year, Chai Zongxuan posthumously named his father Chai Rong Emperor Rui Wu Xiaowen. Chai Zongxuan's birth mother, Empress Dowager Dafu, passed away on July 21, 956, at the age of 26. The current regent in Linchao is Empress Dowager Xiaofu, who is Chai Zongxuan's stepmother and also his aunt. At that time, among the senior generals in charge of the Imperial Guards in Tokyo, Zhang Yonga, the chief inspector of the imperial palace, and Li Zhongjin, the commander of the imperial guards, held high power. On his way back to Tokyo due to illness, Zhou Shizong once found a wooden plaque with the words, Check as the Son of Heaven, written on it. He became suspicious of Zhang Yongda, who was then the chief inspector in front of the palace, and transferred him to serve as the military governor of Chanzhou on the grounds of his lack of independent opinions. Subsequently, Chai Rong promoted Han Tong, who had meritorious service in the Northern Expedition, to the position of Deputy Commander of the Imperial Guards, along with Li Zhongjin, to be in charge of the Imperial Guards. He also promoted Zhao Kuanyin, who had previously held a lower position but gained his trust, to be in charge of the Imperial Censorate in front of the palace. The History of Song provides a very detailed explanation. Emperor Shizong was in the Dao, reading documents from all directions, and obtained a way bag. There was more than three feet of wood in it, with the inscription, Check as the Son of Heaven, which is different. 
At that time, Zhang Yongda was in charge of checking, but Emperor Shizong did not hesitate and returned to the capital. He was appointed as the Grand Tutor of the Imperial Censorate and checked in front of the palace to replace Yongda. After the later historical process, it is known that the establishment of the Song dynasty was entirely due to the personnel changes of Emperor Zhou Shizong, and the greatest beneficiary of this event was the later Song Taizu Zhao Kuanyin, and Chai Rong's dismissal of his brother. In Dot Law Zhang Yongda was also due to the wooden plaque that read, Check to be the Emperor. Liang Xiao knew that Emperor Shizong Chai Rong had adopted Taizu Guowei as his son, entered the family tree, and changed his surname to Guo. Chai Zongxuan is now also known as Guo Zongxuan. The surname Chai is just a self-proclaimed name from the hearts of Liang Xiao in later generations. After fully accepting the memories of the original owner, Liang Xiao looked at the tender hands of his seven-year-old child and felt both joy, shock, and sorrow in his heart. No wonder I used to feel like that shouldn't be my life. I'm a genius, just born out of time. It turns out that I should be in today's time of travel. In this lifetime, I am Emperor Chai Zongxuan of the Zhou dynasty. I just remember that Zhao Kuanyin, the great Zhao, seized the throne in the Tchinxiao Rebellion, launched on the fourth day of the first month in the seventh year of Xianda. Isn't it less than two months since then? But what should we do? Two close palace maids, Wan'e and Zhu'er, saw Chai Zongxuan holding his forehead and sitting on the bed groaning. They knew that it was yesterday when Chai Zongxuan was burying his father, Chai Rong, in Qingling, and they suffered some cold while sacrificing in front of the tomb. However, they had no idea that at this moment, Chai Zongxuan's body had changed to a spirit from over a thousand years ago. Wan'er and Zhu'er quickly sat by the bed and waited on Chai Zongxuan to wash and change clothes. When Chai Zongxuan changed his clothes and walked down from the dragon bed, two palace maids outside the palace carried a bamboo basket containing traditional Chinese medicine prepared by the imperial physician and walked in. The two palace maids deftly opened the bamboo basket and prepared to wait on Chai Zongxuan to drink medicine. Chai Zongxuan waved to the two palace maids. My wind and cold have healed, so I don't need to take any more decoction. You guys step back. One heir advised, Your Majesty, the Empress Dowager has specially instructed the maidservants to wait for Your Majesty to wake up and drink the decoction. Chai Zongxuan knew that these two intimate palace maids had served him since childhood and were the most loyal, but still treated him like a seven-dot-year-dot-old child. Chai Zongxuan said. At my mother's place, I will go and explain myself. Get off now and head to Baozi Temple. Wan'er and Zhu'er were surprised in their hearts. Although the emperor's voice today was immature, it had a commanding aura, combined with the body of his seven-dot-year-dot-old child, emitting a strange aura. Chai Zongxuan left the Qingshou Hall and, accompanied by a large group of eunuchs and palace maids, headed towards the Baozi Hall in the inner courtyard of the palace. The capital of the great Zhou dynasty was Bianliang, which was also the capital of the northern Song dynasty in the original time and space of Chai Zongxuan, and the later Kaifeng. Bianliang is located in the Central Plains region, with a very important geographical location. It is situated on the south bank of the Yellow River and has developed water transportation. After a cup of tea, Chai Zongxuan walked to the Baozi Hall. Empress Dowager Xiaofu has received a notification from the eunuch and is sitting high in the main seat waiting. Chai Zongxuan walked into the hall and bowed to Empress Dowager Fu, who was beautiful and had a kind expression, My dear son, please see my mother. Our mother's holy body is safe. Empress Dowager Fu smiled and said, Emperor, please get up. Come and sit next to the Queen Mother. Chai Zongxuan walked over to the wooden chair next to Empress Dowager Fu and sat down. Empress Dowager Fu looked at Chai Zongxuan's small face for a moment, grabbed his small hand, and happily said. Huang'er's complexion is good, I believe the cold wind has indeed healed. Just now, my mother was worried that my son wouldn't want to take the imperial medicine decoction. 
Now it seems that the mother is overthinking Chai Zongxuan felt the warmth emanating from Empress Dowager Fu's jade hands, just as she had always shown her love and care for herself. Now that my father passed away suddenly, the entire palace is left with only myself and Empress Dowager Fu, an orphan and widowed mother, dependent on each other. Chai Zongxuan looked at the eunuch and palace maid standing in the palace. You all leave the palace. I and the Empress Dowager have something to say. The eunuchs and palace maids looked at each other, and the seven dot year dot old emperor was giving orders like this for the first time. They couldn't help but bow and look at Empress Dowager Fu. Empress Dowager Fu was also slightly surprised in her heart, but when she thought of Chai Zongxuan, who had always been gentle and obedient, and was only seven years old, she immediately ignored him and thought that he was a child with a sudden change of heart. She had something, secret, to tell herself. Empress Dowager Fu nodded slightly and said, You all leave the palace. The emperor must have a secret to tell this palace. Chai Zongxuan looked around and saw that the eunuchs and palace maids had all bowed out of the palace. He then turned his eyes to look at Empress Dowager Fu. Mother, there is indeed a big secret that I want to tell you. Empress Dowager Fu smiled and said, only my mother and son are here. It's okay to train my son. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Empress Dowager Fu You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Empress Dowager Fu Chai Zongxuan leaned closer to Empress Dowager Fu and felt a refreshing fragrance emanating from his body. Chai Zongxuan calmed down and whispered in Empress Dowager Fu's ear. Mother, Zhao Kuanyin is a great treacherous minister who will soon usurp the throne. We must find a way to eliminate him immediately. Upon hearing this, Empress Dowager Fu was greatly surprised and looked at Chai Zongxuan hesitantly, saying, Emperor, this Zhao Kuanyin is your father's trusted general. Your father only arranged for him to be appointed as an important inspector in front of the palace before his death, and he is a trusted minister. And in the past few months, since he took over as the inspector of the capital, he has been quite impressive in rectifying the forbidden army. How could he have the intention of usurping the throne and plotting rebellion Chai Zongxuan said, Mother, the wooden plaque that Father Emperor picked up on his way back to Bianjing must have been tampered with by someone intentionally to show Father Emperor. It is highly likely that this was planned by Zhao Kuanyin. Otherwise, where would there be such a coincidence? Zhang Yongda is a married relative of our Zhou royal family and has always been loyal to our Zhou dynasty. His father, the emperor, had great trust in him. And Zhao Kuanyin's rectification of the forbidden army was precisely because he had secretly planted his confidants, intending to plot against them. Upon hearing this, Empress Dowager Fu was momentarily startled and uncertain. After a while, she asked, Sun, do you have any good ideas? Chai Zongxuan had already figured out a way on his way to meet Empress Dowager Fu. Knowing that Empress Dowager Fu was a female socialite, she immediately said. Mother, we should take immediate action to eliminate Zhao Kuanyin, otherwise it will be a disaster of our own death and the destruction of our country. Last night, I dreamed that my father, the emperor, had a dream that Zhao Kuanyin had ulterior motives, while Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin were ministers of the state. The father ordered his sons and ministers to secretly decree Zhang and Li to return to the capital, and together with the deputy commander of the imperial guards, Han Tong, to capture the power of the Zhao Kuanyin faction. When Empress Dowager Fu heard from Chai Zongxuan that it was her father, Chai Rong, who had entrusted a dream, she believed in it sixty to seventy percent in her heart. She has often dreamed of the late Emperor Chai Rong in the past few months, but it is all about personal matters and there is no major matter to explain. After pondering for a moment, Empress Dowager Fu said, Your son, if it is your father who entrusted you with a dream, then we will convene Prime Minister Fan Ji and Second Prime Minister Wang Pu to discuss before proceeding. Chai Zongxuan thought to himself. Wang Pu had already been secretly bought by Zhao De and his two brothers, and although Fan Ji was loyal to De Zhou and Mi, he had no defense against Wang Pu and his two brothers. 
One day in August, my mother went to court and was advised by officials such as Xing Qi and Yang Hui to restrict or even eliminate Zhao Kuanyin. However, they were stopped by Wang Puli. In the eyes of the emperor, Wang Pu is afraid that he has already been bribed by Zhao Kuanyin and has become one of his followers. Empress Dowager Fu couldn't help but recall the scene in the court that day. Censors Xing Qi, Yang Hueli, and Chen Zhao Kuanyin have been conducting inspections in front of the palace for several months. They have been bribing people's hearts and rallying factions in the Forbidden Army, fearing that they may have a sense of disobedience. They have requested His Majesty to seize this person's power and sentence him to prison and death. At that time, both myself and the Emperor had no independent opinions and sought the opinions of several Prime Ministers in the court. This time, the Prime Minister Pu went out to discuss the loyalty and talent of Zhao Kuanyin, who was personally promoted by the late Emperor. It was only then that Prime Minister Fan Ji came forward and suppressed the impeachment of Zhao Kuanyin by Zheng Qi and Yang Hui. It seems that, as the Emperor said, Wang Pu has secretly defected to Zhao Kuanyin. Chai Zongxuan continued to speak eloquently to Empress Dowager Fu. After my mother, the world of Zhou was established by Emperor Taizu and his father, who overcame numerous difficulties and dangers. We must never be taken away by a traitor with just one carelessness. At present, among the courtiers, only Zhang Yongde and Li Zhongjin have a higher prestige in the imperial army than Zhao Kuanyin. In order to avoid being detected by Zhao Kuanyin and others, please immediately secretly send someone to summon the two to serve in the capital. Empress Dowager Fu finally felt a heartbeat and shouted to the outside of the hall, General Manager Li, enter the hall. In no time, a eunuch in his fifties, with a cautious and shrewd expression on his face, respectfully entered the palace. It was Li Fu, the current head of the imperial household attendant, grand household manager, and the elder of the three imperial dynasties. Li Fu knelt down and saluted, old servant, see the Empress Dowager. See your majesty. Chai Zongxuan sighed slightly in his heart, knowing that although he was the emperor in both the court and the palace, due to his young age, all the power was in the hands of the Empress Dowager. Empress Dowager Fu said, General Manager Li, this palace orders to immediately send someone to secretly leave the capital, and carry the secret decree of this palace to convey Zhang Yongde and Li Zhongjin to lead their own troops to sneak back to the capital. Li Fu, the confidant of Chai Rong who left behind to assist Empress Dowager Fu and Chai Zongxuan, immediately said, I will obey your orders. Stand up and prepare to leave the hall for business. Chai Zongxuan suddenly said, General Manager Li, pass on my decree to have Han Tong, the deputy commander of the Imperial Guard, come to the Qingshou Palace to see me. Upon hearing Chai Zongxuan's calm tone, Li Fu was slightly surprised and saluted, I will strictly follow your majesty's orders. Chai Zongxuan nodded slightly, watching Li Fugong exit the hall, and then turned to chat with Empress Dowager Fu. Empress Dowager Fu smiled and said, Your majesty, this Han Tong has a hot temper and many ministers in the court are unhappy. How could you want to summon him? Chai Zongxuan thought to himself. In the history of time and space, after Zhao Kuanyin's Qinxiao Rebellion, Han Tong, as the deputy commander of the Imperial Guards, led the Imperial Guards to prepare for the rebellion. However, his rough personality led to many generals and leaders of the Imperial Guards being seduced by Zhao Kuanyin. Han Tong heard the news and wanted to gather his army to resist, but was killed by Wang Yensheng, a subordinate of Zhao Kuanyin. Chai Zongxuan smiled and said, Mother, although this Han Tong has a hot temper, he is loyal to me, the royal family of the Zhou dynasty. A general like him will not buy the hearts of the Forbidden Army, but rather deserves our trust and reliance Empress Dowager Fu was slightly surprised in her heart and said, Your words are reasonable. No wonder your father and emperor used to praise your intelligence and wisdom. Chai Zongxuan fully shared the preferences of Empress Dowager Fu and occasionally revealed his talents and wisdom, chatting happily with Empress Dowager Fu. At noon, Chai Zongxuan accompanied Empress Dowager Fu to have a meal together in the Baozi Hall, and then bid farewell and returned to his own Qingshou Hall. As he walked on the road, 
Chai Zongxuan thought to himself, now Zhao Kuanyin should not be fully fledged, he has only bribed many middle and low dot level generals in the Forbidden Army. Speaking of which, the so dot called National Policy of Valuing Commerce was created by Emperor Chai Rong, who had been in business for more than ten years and was well aware of the importance of commerce to the country's finances and economy. Zhao De usurped the throne with a military general, which changed the court structure of the Han and Tang dynasties, where both civil and military officials were equally important. This led to the dominance of civil officials, resulting in a decline in martial arts skills and even the shame of Jinkang. Compared to Zhao De, Zhao Er is even more despicable. I don't know if the wooden plaque incident on my father's way back to Beijing was Zhao Er's scheme after a cup of tea, Chai Zongxuan, accompanied by a large group of eunuchs and palace maids, walked back to the Qingzhou Hall. After sitting down on the throne, Chai Zongxuan casually looked at the eunuchs in the palace. Tang Qi, the eunuch in front of the palace, has been serving himself since childhood and his loyalty should be unquestionable. At this time, men are superior to women, and palace maids are just tools and not valued. Are there any spies among my close eunuchs who were bribed by Zhao De or Zhao Er? Chai Zongxuan picked up the hot tea that the palace maid had just brewed and took a sip. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Deputy Commander Han Tong. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Deputy Commander Han Tong Chai Zongxuan looked at the eunuchs and palace maid standing by the attendants and said, General Manager Tang stayed behind, and everyone else withdrew from outside the hall. After the eunuchs and palace maids left the palace, Chai Zongxuan looked at Tang Chi, the chief eunuch in front of the palace, and said, Manager Tang, how many years have you been in the palace? Tang Chi quickly bowed and said, Your Majesty, I have been in the palace since the second year of Guangxuan and served you in the first year of Xianda. I have been in the palace for nine years. Chai Zongxuan thought to himself, Tang Chi entered the palace during the reign of Emperor Taizu and was sent by his father to take care of me from a young age. The possibility of being bribed by Zhao De and Zhao Er is extremely low, so there should be no doubt about his loyalty to me. Chai Zongxuan nodded slightly and said. Over the years, General Manager Tang has been diligent and devoted to me, fulfilling my father's trust. I am aware of all of this. Upon hearing this, Tang Chi quickly bowed excitedly and cowed out, saying, I am deeply grateful to your majesty and the late emperor. I dare not break my bones to repay you. Chai Zongxuan said, Great. Manager Tang, get up. I remember you were from Heung Prefecture. Who else are there in your family now? Tang Chi climbed up from the ground and respectfully said, Your Majesty, the servant came from a poor background. Currently, in the family of Heung Prefecture, his father died in the Yi City Rebellion, and there is still an old mother and a younger brother and sister who rely on each other in the village. Upon hearing this, Chai Zongxuan became interested. Manager Tang, are you only seventeen years old this year? Isn't your younger brother and sister younger in age? Isn't it very difficult for your mother to live in her hometown? Tang Chi was moved and said, Your Majesty, I have been honored by Your Majesty's grace to serve as the chief steward in front of the palace, and have been able to occasionally send silver home to my mother's household. Although not considered wealthy, it is still possible to smoothly cross the day during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period, it had been decades since the end of the Tang Dynasty when the world was in chaos, and the economy of the whole country was in decline, with the people living in hardship. Even eunuchs, palace maids, and other attendants in the imperial palace of the great Zhou dynasty generally had low salaries. Although Tang Chi was the eunuch in charge of Emperor Chai Zongxuan's palace, his monthly salary was only ten taels. His mother raised a young son and daughter in her hometown of Heung Prefecture, which was quite difficult. Chai Zongxuan said, General Manager Tang has worked hard and achieved great success. I authorize you to bring all your family to the capital, and I hereby grant you a mansion for your convenience in taking care of your family. Upon hearing this, Tang Chi burst into tears of gratitude and said with great respect, 
Your Majesty's kindness is higher than heavens, and I cannot repay you in this lifetime. Chai Zongshuan nodded and smiled, General Manager Tang, there are still many things I want you to do for me in the future. Now I want you to go to Jianbao and collect some jewelry, and select two exceptionally beautiful palace maids from the palace Tang Chi was slightly surprised in his heart, only feeling that the emperor was incredibly mature in his speech and actions today. Thinking again. Your majesty is only seven years old, but why choose a palace maid with outstanding beauty? Seeing Chai Zongxuan's sharp gaze towards him, Tang Chi quickly bowed and replied. I will obey your majesty's orders. Tang Chi immediately respectfully withdrew from the Qingshou Hall and went to arrange. Chai Zongxuan sat on his throne pondering for over an hour. Tang Chi, along with several eunuchs holding several boxes of treasures, and two gorgeous palace maids, returned to the Qingshou Palace, only then did he awaken Chai Zongxuan from his contemplation. Chai Zongxuan looked at the treasures in the box and the two palace maids aged seventeen and eight, all of whom were rare and beautiful in the palace, and was quite satisfied. After chatting with Tang Chi and others for a while, Shen Shi had arrived. The eunuch outside the palace reported that Han Tong, the deputy commander of the Imperial Guards, had been ordered to come. Chai Zongxuan immediately issued an edict to announce Han Tong Jin to the palace. In no time, a tall and burly general, about fifty years old, with the aura of a battlefield, followed the eunuch and the Imperial Guards into the palace with great strides. When he saw Chai Zongxuan sitting on the throne, he saluted and said, Han Tong, the deputy commander of the Imperial Guard's personal army, see your majesty. Chai Zongxuan fixed his gaze on Han Tong Lai and saw that he had a rough and broad appearance, a heroic expression, and a face full of wind and frost. Chai Zongxuan said, Han Commander Ping Shen. After Han was able to communicate with him, Chai Zongxuan continued, Han's commanding officer has been following his father's army for many years, and he is unparalleled in loyalty and bravery. I only found out today when I heard from my mother. Today I summon Commander Han to come and reward you well. Upon hearing this, Han Tong was overjoyed and felt that although the emperor was young, every word had been spoken in his heart. Han Tong quickly bowed again and said, The late emperor and his majesty are waiting for me to rebuild our relationship. I can only repay you by vowing to die. Chai Zongxuan believed this statement. It turns out that in the history of time and space, after Zhao Kuanyin's Qinxiao Rebellion, only Han Tong rose up to suppress the rebellion among the senior generals of the Forbidden Army. Chai Zongxuan waved his hand lightly, and Tang Qi, the eunuch in charge in front of the hall, quickly led six eunuchs holding precious wooden boxes and two gorgeous palace maids down the Jade Pavilion to approach Han Tong. Chai Zongxuan said, My father passed away suddenly, and I ascended to the throne at a young age. I need a loyal and brave person like Han Commander. These palace treasures and these two palace maids, I reward them to Commander Han. I hope that Commander Han will not disappoint our ancestors and our expectations. Han Tong, due to his hot temper and straightforward demeanor, was often suppressed due to his discord with the various ministers in the court, in the Forbidden Army, he was far less capable of bribing people than Zhao Kuanyin, and gradually had the potential to be sidelined by Zhao Kuanyin. In recent months, he has been feeling extremely troubled. Seeing Emperor Chai Zongxuan's generous gift today, I couldn't help but be moved by it. Han Tong knelt down with a thud and looked at Chai Zongxuan, saying, Your Majesty has treated me so well that I, old Han, can only entrust my life and fortune to Your Majesty. As long as Your Majesty says a word, I, old Han, will not frown at all. Chai Zongxuan patted the armrest of the dragon chair. Okay. Commander Han, please speak up quickly, which suits my needs. Hurry up, please. After Han Tong stood up like an iron tower, Chai Zongxuan said. Commander Han, I want you to secretly replace the guards of my Qingshou Hall and Empress Dowager Baozi Hall with your confidants within five days. Can you possibly do this? Han Tong thought to himself, 
the Forbidden Army is responsible for guarding so many palaces in the Imperial Palace, and there are also several palaces in the Outer Court. It's just a matter of temporarily replacing the Forbidden Army in the Qingshou Palace and Baozi Palace in the Inner Court with his own people, without any problem. At the same time, there was a faint speculation in my heart that the Emperor was about to take action against Zhao Kuanyin. Han Tong immediately said in a loud voice, Your Majesty, please rest assured that I will complete Your Majesty's instructions within five days, and there will be no difference. Chai Zongxuan was delighted in his heart and thought to himself. I am the Emperor, and in name, everyone must listen to me. Zhao De also created an excellent situation for the invasion of the Northern Han Dynasty and the Khitan Empire, and led all the elite Imperial Guards in front of the palace and the Imperial Guards before he could usurp the throne in one fell swoop. The second Prime Minister of the court, Pu, has secretly defected to Zhao Kuanyin. If he were to take action in the court, he would be afraid of having many dreams at night, and the good or bad would be unpredictable. Everything is done in secret. I might as well learn from Emperor Wu of Northern Zhou, Yu Wenyong, and the Qing dynasty's Damatsi Kangxi. Chai Zongxuan smiled and said. My father once said, in ten years, we will open up the world, nurture the people, and achieve peace. He fought in both the South and North, achieving remarkable martial arts skills. I, as the Emperor, should serve the majesty of my father. Commander Han, Tomorrow you will select twenty teenagers around the age of ten in the capital and accompany me to practice martial arts every day. Before taking action to remove Zhao Kuanyin, Chai Zongxuan didn't even plan to tell Han Tong. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Ranger Zhang Yong You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Ranger Zhang Yong Han Tong thought to himself your Majesty wants to practice martial arts, which is a good thing. Although their flowery fists and embroidered legs naturally won't make it to the battlefield, Your Majesty values military affairs, better than being indoctrinated by the ministers of the court with the idea of valuing literature over martial arts every day. After Han Tong bowed and promised, he happily left the main hall with his treasures and two palace maids as rewards. Five days later, Han Tong had secretly replaced the forbidden troops of Baozi Hall and Qingshou Hall with his confidants. Upon hearing this, Zhao Kuanyin and his younger brother Zhao Kuanyi, as well as his trusted advisor Zhao Pu, discussed for a long time. However, as the time for seizing power had not yet arrived, he had to endure it forcefully. In the next ten days, Chai Zongxuan not only accompanied Empress Dowager Fu to dine and chat with her, but also practiced martial arts with twenty agile teenagers in the capital who were sent by Han Tong's forbidden army in the Xingwu Hall. It was said to be practicing martial arts, and Han Tong taught Chai Zongxuan and twenty young boys some practical martial arts skills. However, most of the time, Chai Zongxuan himself was playing and playing with twenty young boys, and only allowed Han Tong to teach twenty young boys their battlefield skills. After spending a few days together, a clever and agile 14 year old boy caught the attention of Chai Zongxuan. Upon inquiry, it was learned that the young man's name was Zhang Yong, born in the third year of Kaiyun in later Jin, 946 AD, in Wancheng, Puzhou. His family was poor, and he was a chivalrous person who was not bound by small details. He learned fencing, was generous and talkative, and was happy for his extraordinary integrity. I also enjoy playing chess and am proficient in archery. Zhang Yong went to Huashan last year to visit Chen Tuan and wanted to worship him as his teacher. Chen Tuan regarded Zhang Yong as a talented scholar and advised him to come to Bianjing for a trip. This time, Han Tong selected young men to accompany Emperor Chaizong in training martial arts in Bianjing. He heard the name of Zhang Yong as a ranger in the market and invited him. Chai Zongxuan was overjoyed and treated Zhang Yong kindly, becoming his confidant. At that moment, Zhang Yongshan felt the kindness of encountering. Chai Zongxuan asked, Zhang Aiching, is Chen Tuan really a legendary immortal? Zhang Yong hesitated for a moment before bowing and saying, Your Majesty, 
when the grassroots people saw Chen Laozu last year in Huashan, he lived in seclusion at the foot of Huashan. He had an immortal demeanor and a strong character. When we met, he looked over the heads of the grass people for a moment, and they felt like everything was being seen through by him. The immortal technique has a shallow connection with the people, and I have never seen Chen Laozu perform it before. However, I believe he is extremely proficient in the art of divination. After pondering for a while, Chai Zongxuan immediately ordered Zhang Yong to teach the martial arts of other young people daily. In order to avoid startling the snake with grass, Chai Zongxuan and Empress Dowager Fu acted as usual during the early dynasties, without mentioning Zhao Kuanyin at all. Chai Zongxuan buried his father, Chai Rong, in Qingling in November and buried him with his first empress, Empress Chenhui Lu. Later, he ordered the History Museum to compile a record of Emperor Shizong as a biography of Chai Rongli. At the proposal of Prime Ministers Fan Ji, Wang Pu, Wei Renpu, and others, Zhao Kuanyin was granted the title of Founding Marquis, allowing him to control the Song State's Guide Army and be responsible for the defense of Bianjing. It can be said that the entire Guide Army and half of the Forbidden Army have been nominally controlled by Zhao Kuanyin. In recent days, all the courtiers in the court have heard of Emperor Chai Zongxuan's recruitment of twenty young men to practice martial arts in the palace. Prime Minister Fan Ji and Second Prime Minister Wang Pu all believed that Chai Zongxuan had a childlike nature. In the early days of the court, Fan Ji advised Chai Zongxuan to say a few words, love wise officials, play far away, and then he just did it. During the early days of the dynasty, Chai Zongxuan seized the opportunity to express some opinions on the country, such as developing water conservancy, reducing the burden on the people, promoting commerce, etc., leaving a preliminary impression of being a wise lord among the courtiers. On November 25, the sixth year of Xianda, 959 AD, while Chai Zongxuan was having dinner with Empress Dowager Fu at the Baozi Hall, a eunuch walked outside the hall to report something. Li Fu, the head of the Imperial Household Department, walked out of the hall and whispered to the eunuch for a while before returning to the hall and standing by Empress Fu's side. After Empress Dowager Fu and Emperor Chai Zongxuan finished their dinner, Li Fu Gong whispered. I hereby inform the Empress Dowager that the task she entrusted to the servants a few days ago has already been revealed. In the past few days, Empress Dowager Fu has been spending time with Emperor Chai Zongxuan and has repeatedly reminded her to be careful of spies from the Zhao Kuanyin family in the palace attendance. She immediately waved her hand lightly and said to the hundreds of eunuchs and palace maids standing in the palace. General Manager Li, please stay and leave the hall temporarily. After the eunuchs and palace maids left the palace, Li Fu whispered. After informing the Empress Dowager, the maidservants secretly sent someone to deliver an edict to the Huainan Jidushi Li Zhongjin and the Chanzhou Jidushi Zhang Yongda. After receiving the edict, the two immediately followed the edict and had already taken 1,000 elite soldiers with them to sneak 10 miles outside Bianjing. Please make a decision, Empress Dowager. Empress Dowager Fu and Chai Zongxuan exchanged glances for a moment, and Chai Zongxuan nodded at Empress Dowager Fu with a determined expression. Empress Dowager Fu gritted her teeth and looked at Li Fu, saying, Immediately transmit a secret decree to Li Zhongjin and Zhang Yongfu, ordering them to break into the capital at midnight tonight and fully control the defense of the Forbidden Army. Dismiss Zhao Kuanyin and his party on the spot. If there are rebels, kill them without hesitation. Empress Dowager Fu took out a sacred edict from her arms and solemnly handed it to Li Fu. Li Fuxing received the imperial edict with both hands and respectfully stepped out of the hall. Empress Dowager Fu felt as if her whole body had collapsed, and she softened on the throne. She turned to look at Chai Zongxuan and sighed. Huang Er, are you really going to do this? Zhao Kuanyin is the trusted general of your father's emperor. If we wrongly accuse him and force him to turn him around, what should we do? Chai Zongxuan snorted coldly. Mother, the great Zhou belongs to our Guo family. His Zhao Kuanyin is just a military general. We seize his military power, and if he resists, it proves that he has long had the intention to rebel. 
so our actions at this moment are absolutely right. If he obeys the imperial decree to revoke his military power, he is truly a loyal minister, and I will not kill him. In the future, we can use his talents to their fullest potential Empress Dowager Fu also realized that it was normal for the emperor to appoint or dismiss a general. At this point, Empress Dowager Fu could only nod. Chai Zongshuan comforted the Empress Dowager for a while, then bid farewell and returned to his birthday celebration hall. Shortly after leaving the Baozi Hall, Chai Zongshuan stood on a fixed footpath. General Manager Tang, immediately take someone with heavy treasures to personally go to Zhao Kuanyin's mansion and pass on my decree to order him to come to the martial arts hall. I have heard that he has excellent martial arts skills and has created his own fist and stick techniques. I want him to personally teach me. Tang Chi was puzzled and thought that Chai Zongxuan had been obsessed with martial arts recently. He really wanted to learn from Zhao Kuanyin, so he immediately agreed and led ten eunuchs out of the palace with treasures. He then took a carriage to the residence of Zhao Kuanyin, the founding marquis, in the south of Bianjing. More than a quarter of an hour later, Tang Chi had arrived at the door of Zhao Kuanyin's mansion, and Zhao Kuanyin received the report and welcomed him. After the ceremony, Tang Chi smiled and said, Marquis Zhao, your majesty has been obsessed with martial arts recently. I heard that Marquis Zhao is the brave general of our Zhou dynasty, and his martial arts skills are even higher than that of Deputy Commander Han. Today, a special servant came to invite the Marquis into the palace to teach His Majesty. These treasures were personally ordered by His Majesty to be brought and rewarded to the Marquis by the servants Zhao Kuanyin had long heard of Chai Zongxuan's gathering of twenty young men to practice martial arts in the palace, and he had already harbored contempt in his heart, now upon hearing Tang Chi's summons, I thought to myself. Chai Zongxuan is just a seven-dot-year-dot-old child. What do he understand? What can he do? No wonder a few days ago, Han Tong secretly replaced the Imperial Guards and the Imperial Guards outside the Empress Dowager's palace with his own people. It turned out that he was quite favored for accompanying the young emperor in martial arts practice and playing. Hunth Han Tong, this fool, thinks that by pleasing the little emperor, he can surpass me in power in the future. What a frog at the bottom of a well. After I finish the layout, there will be you and Han Tong looking good. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Inspection by Zhao Kuanyin. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Inspection by Zhao Kuanyin. Zhao Kuanyin smiled and said, Even if Your Majesty summons me to teach martial arts, I will serve on my own. Your Majesty, although young, has the style of the late Emperor's military and military training. It is truly the blessing of my great Zhou. Tang Gonggong, please wait a moment after Zhao Kuanyin ordered his family guards to accept many treasures, he personally ordered 300 trusted soldiers to come to the mansion and follow Tang Chi and his entourage to the palace. After Tang Chi left the palace, Chai Zongxuan immediately summoned 20 young soldiers from the martial arts room, including Han Tong and Zhang Yong, who were the deputy commanders of the Imperial Guards. After the salute, Chai Zongxuan said. I have heard that Zhao Kuanyin, the Marquis of Kaigua, has exceptional martial arts skills. Today, I want to see with my own eyes how powerful he is. Han Aiching, I have arranged for Zhao Kuanyin to come to the martial arts hall for a martial arts competition later. In order to prevent this matter from spreading to the court and the people, saying that I enjoy playing and causing trouble would damage my reputation. After Zhao Kuanyin enters the Xingwu Hall, quickly lead a thousand forbidden soldiers to surround the hall and strictly prohibit any leaks of information. Afterwards, everything will be according to my orders. Han Tong, as the emperor, was obsessed with martial arts and really wanted to see Zhao Kuanyin's martial arts. As a rough person, he couldn't imagine any twists and turns, so he immediately agreed to step back and arrange. Chai Zongxuan looked at twenty young trainees including Zhang Yong and sternly said. I have boasted to the founding Marquis Zhao Kuanyin that the twenty young warriors I have carefully selected are the warriors I personally trained. Later, Zhao Kuanyin will go to the Xingwu Hall to test your martial arts skills, 
and I will make him fight against you. If this battle is won, you will all be my confidants. In the future, I will arrange for you to become the leaders of the Forbidden Army, beautiful women in fertile fields, promoted and wealthy. If this battle is defeated, my face will be ruined by you. If it's so useless, I will exterminate all nine of you. Twenty young men were greatly shocked, thinking in their hearts that they would defeat Zhao Kuanyin no matter what. Zhang Yong took the lead, and twenty young men knelt down and saluted. Your Majesty, please rest assured. Grass people and others swear to defeat Zhao Kuanyin to the death, and will never harm your majesty's holy face. Chai Zongxuan nodded and shouted. Are you ready? Everyone agrees. Chai Zongxuan then took the lead, leading the palace attendants and twenty young men, and strode towards the Xingwu Hall. The effort of a cup of tea has arrived at the Xingwu Hall. After sitting down in his seat, Chai Zongxuan's heart couldn't help but jump wildly, and he quickly comforted himself by saying, Today's action, I have to do it. Anyway, if I don't take action, Zhao De will also kill me. If I succeed today, I will earn a crown prince to do it, if unfortunately you fail, just consider it a dream with this in mind, Chai Zongxuan's mood gradually calmed down. The eunuchs, palace maids, and twenty young men all stood silently around Chai Zongxuan's body. The sky outside the palace gradually darkened, and the entire palace was lit with lights, creating a moment of glory and solemnity. After waiting for more than half an hour, Chai Zongxuan finally heard the rustling of footsteps as he approached the Xingwu Hall. Finally, the sound of footsteps stopped outside the hall, and Tang Chi, the eunuch in charge of the hall, led Zhao Kuanyin into the hall. Three hundred trusted members of the Forbidden Army who came with Zhao Kuanyin waited outside the palace gate. The two of them saluted Chai Zongxuan and said, See your majesty. Long live the emperor. Long live the emperor. Chai Zongxuan scrutinized Zhao Kuanyin in detail. Seeing his face as big as a round cake, slender eyes, thick eyelids, low and straight nose, wide lower palate, and dark skin, it is likely due to his long experience in the battlefield. Chai Zongxuan stood up from his chair and smiled as he helped Zhao Kuanyin up, saying. Ai Ching is flat. I heard a few days ago that Zhao Ai Ching is the most brave warrior in my Zhou dynasty. It's despicable that Han Tong has been keeping it from me, saying he is the most brave warrior in the world. My father, the emperor, has also praised Zhao Aiching's loyalty and bravery many times in Japan. Therefore, today I specially ordered Duke Tang to invite him to show me his extraordinary martial arts skills Zhao Kuanyin stood up and saw Chai Zongxuan's small face full of admiration, feeling relieved in his heart. Your Majesty is just a child, locked up in the palace every day, following the rules and following the distance, inevitably boring. When I was his age, I also searched for people to fight everywhere in Zhuo County, visited teachers and friends, and was determined to become a great hero with high martial arts skills. Zhao Kuanyin smiled and said, Your Majesty praises me, but I feel ashamed and unworthy of it. It is Your Majesty's intention that I am willing to showcase to Your Majesty what I have learned throughout my life. Chai Zongxuan smiled and said, Zhao Aiching, I don't understand martial arts. I often hear Han Tong boasting that his martial arts are superior to yours. Therefore, I have come up with a method of competition to prove to Han Tong and other people in the world that Zhao Aiching is indeed the number one warrior of our great Zhou dynasty seeing Zhao Kuanyin smile and nod, Chai Zongxuan extended his small hand and grabbed his arm, pulling his body down and approaching his ear, saying. Zhao Aiching, you know, both the Queen Mother and the court officials don't like me to practice martial arts, so I specially invited you to come after dark. Our martial arts competition must be conducted quietly, and we must not leak any information. Therefore, I have instructed Deputy Commander Han to impose martial law on this place. This matter must not be known to the Queen Mother, otherwise she will scold me again as soon as Chai Zongxuan finished speaking, there was a sound of footsteps outside the Xingwu Hall. Han Tong, the deputy commander of the Imperial Guard, 
had already led a thousand forbidden troops to surround the area around the Xingwu Hall, laying a heavy siege. Zhao Kuanyin's face slightly changed, and Han Tong quickly walked into the hall to pay his respects to Chai Zongxuan. After Chai Zongxuan asked Han Tong to stand up, he grabbed Zhao Kuanyin in Han Tong's arms with both hands and smiled, saying, Today I want to see with my own eyes who is more skilled in martial arts, Zhao Aiching and Han Aiching, who are renowned in our Zhou army. As it concerns the reputation of the two love ministers in the military, only I, the two love ministers, and twenty young martial arts practitioners are left in the palace. The others exit the palace, close the doors and windows, and are not allowed to watch Han Tong originally thought that Chai Zongxuan was inviting Zhao Kuanyin to come and compete in martial arts, and immediately bowed to Zhao Kuanyin. Zhao Jianjian, your majesty has instructed that I have no choice but to boldly ask you for advice on martial arts. It's no wonder I still request Zhao Jianjian. Zhao Kuanyin saw Han Tong's troubled expression and immediately felt relieved. Han Tong, a rough person, has never been able to act falsely, and your majesty is only seven years old. Can he still plot against me? Besides, with Han Tong and these twenty inexperienced children, what can I do? Even the thousand forbidden soldiers of Han Tong outside this hall cannot stop the three hundred elite soldiers I am carrying. Your Majesty must have been obsessed with martial arts recently and wants to see who is more skilled between me and Han Tong. This competition, regardless of who wins or loses, is not suitable for dissemination. Your Majesty has carefully considered it Zhao Kuanyin smiled and said, Even if Your Majesty has an order, I have no choice but to show my shame. Chai Zongxuan had a wild expression of joy and clapped his hands, saying, Great! Today I will personally see the unparalleled martial arts skills of Zhao Aiching and Han Aiching. So that I and these twenty young martial arts practitioners can study hard. Chai Zongxuan gestured to Tang Chi, the chief eunuch in front of the hall, with his eyes open. Tang Chi immediately led the eunuchs and palace maids to close all the doors and windows of the main hall and exit. Chai Zongxuan returned to his throne and sat down, with twenty young martial arts practitioners including Zhang Yong standing behind him. Zhao Kuanyin and Han Tong stood on both sides of the Xingwu Hall. As they were not allowed to carry weapons when entering the hall to see Emperor Chai Zongxuan, the two faced off barehanded. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Martial Arts Competition You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Martial Arts Competition After observing each other for a moment, Zhao Kuanyin and Han Tong bowed to Chai Zongxuan and almost simultaneously launched a fight, punching and kicking in the open Xingwu Hall. The two of them moved extremely quickly, and the two figures suddenly merged and separated in the field, occasionally making the sound of fists and feet intersecting. Chai Zongxuan watched intently for a while, and couldn't help but feel secretly shocked. So my ancient Chinese martial arts were so amazing. The movements of Zhao Kuanyin and Han Tong were so rapid and difficult to distinguish, it was just a decisive victory or defeat in front of me. If they were to face death on the battlefield, I wonder what kind of high dot level martial arts would the two of them exhibit. It seems that Han Tong alone cannot take Zhao Kuanyin. After reading for a while, although Chai Zongxuan was not proficient in martial arts, he also noticed some tricks. Han Tongsheng has a stronger physique and greater strength, and Zhao Kuanyin's victory lies in his more flexible movements and strong strength. During the time when Han Tong hit Zhao Kuanyin with two or three punches, Zhao Kuanyin could almost retaliate with five or six punches. Although Han Tong's physique is stronger and stronger, as the situation continues, it will be a matter of time before Han Tong fails. Zhao Kuanyin, who was engaged in fierce battles in the field, felt increasingly relaxed. He knew that if he continued to fight for another two or three quarters, he would definitely be able to defeat Han Tong. Zhao Kuanyin felt even more at ease when he saw that Han Tong had avoided using his killing moves, which was indeed a martial arts competition. He thought to himself. If life and death were to be fought with weapons on the battlefield, I could have already killed Han Tong. 
The little emperor has been delighted with Han Tong these days, but he has only been interested in his martial arts skills. After a while, I completely defeated Han Tong. The little emperor will definitely be closer to me, which will naturally make my layout more convenient. Xiao Kuangin's body moved with the will, and as he was about to attack Han Tong, his fists and feet added another 10% of his strength. At this moment, Han Tong was already panting for breath, but he realized that he could never lose in front of Emperor Chai Zongxuan, so he immediately forcefully supported him. Suddenly, Chai Zongxuan spoke up and said, Let's stop for now, two beloved ministers. Zhao Kuangyin and Han Tong both jumped away from each side, stopped and looked towards Chai Zongxuan, who had risen from his seat in the distance. Chai Zongxuan had an extremely excited expression and clapped his hands, saying with a smile. The two beloved ministers are truly the brave warriors of my great Zhou dynasty, which has greatly broadened my horizons. Zhao Aiching, your fists and feet are so powerful. Did you create your own long fist just now? Zhao Kuanyin bowed and smiled, saying. Your Majesty, what I just used was indeed my own long fist. This fist technique was created by me through my travels in the martial arts world and more than ten years of bloody battles on the battlefield. Chai Zongxuan danced and said, Good. The two beloved ministers have unparalleled martial arts skills. I will reward each of you with one hundred tails of gold. The two young martial arts practitioners behind Chai Zongxuan immediately picked up two plates of gold ingots from the table and walked to Zhao Kuanyin and Han Tong. The two of them were overjoyed and quickly accepted the wooden tray containing gold ingots. Zhao Kuanyin's last bit of caution was taken away. Chai Zongxuan smiled and said, Zhao Aiching has repeatedly charged into battle. At this moment, I really want to see I Ching's unparalleled style with many enemies and ease of movement. I have asked these twenty young men and Han I Ching to seek advice from Zhao I Ching together. I wonder if Zhao I Ching dares to fight. If he is physically exhausted, Zhao I Ching doesn't have to force himself. Zhao Kuanyin smiled slightly and thought to himself. Did the little emperor still use the method of provocation on me? Ha, huh, just these teenagers are not enough for me to punch and kick alone. The little emperor is happy, so today he will play according to his wishes. Zhao Kuanyin smiled and said, If your majesty is interested, I will have to sacrifice my life to accompany the gentleman. Chai Zongxuan exclaimed loudly, Good. Zhao Aiching is unparalleled in grandeur. These twenty young men are the warriors I have personally trained these days. I will personally teach Han Aiching and some of their combat skills. Zhao Aiching is not allowed to eavesdrop. Zhao Kuanyin felt a hint of contempt in his heart, thinking to himself. You don't know any martial arts skills yourself, can you still train others? Zhao Kuanyin smiled and said, Although your majesty teaches them the secret code, I will never eavesdrop. Zhao Kuanyin put down the wooden plate containing the gold ingots and strode towards the southwest corner of the Xingwu Hall. Chai Zongxuan saw that Zhao Kuanyin had gone far and immediately waved to twenty young men including Han Tong and Zhang Yong. After everyone gathered around him, Chai Zongxuan whispered. What I am saying now is a matter of great concern to the country. You must listen carefully and never let out a scream. Do you all understand twenty teenagers, including Han Tong and Zhang Yong, nodded solemnly. Chai Zongxuan looked at Zhao Kuanyin about three hundred meters away in the distance, turned his head, and said word for word. I want you to kill Zhao Kuanyin in this battle. Upon hearing this, Han Tong and others were shocked and almost exclaimed. Fortunately, they immediately remembered what Chai Zongxuan had just told them, and immediately restrained themselves. Chai Zongxuan, with a solemn expression, took out a small cloth bag from the lining of the imperial robe and looked at the crowd, saying in a deep voice. This battle is only allowed to win, not to lose. If Xiao Kuanyin is executed, you will all be my trusted ministers from now on, enjoying endless glory, wealth, and honor. If Xiao Kuanyin were to escape from the palace, including me, everyone here would die without a place to bury themselves. In this cloth bag, there are dozens of short knives specially made by Master Tang with skilled craftsmen, 
only two inches long. This knife not only cuts iron like mud, but also has highly toxic substances on it. Each of you should take one and use this sword only when searching for a chance to win in the battle. If you must stab Zhao Kuangyin, he will die. I have arranged for Zhang Yongda and Li Chengjin to lead elite soldiers to lurk outside the capital, and only need to kill Zhao Kuangyin. The rest is under my control. Life and death are in this act. Dear all, please do not lose my hope. Han Tong and others were also aware of the seriousness of the situation, so they reached out to take a shiny short knife from their small cloth bag and hid it in their sleeves. Everyone bowed respectfully to Chai Zongxuan and whispered, I will surely fulfill your majesty's will. Even if we fight to death, we will execute Zhao Kuanyin. Chai Zongxuan nodded, afraid that it would make Zhao Kuanyin suspicious over time. He immediately turned his head to look at Zhao Kuanyin in the southwest corner of the main hall and shouted. Zhao Aiching, you can start the martial arts competition now. Upon hearing this, Zhao Kuanyin strode over and bowed respectfully to Chai Zongxuan. Chai Zongxuan waved his hand lightly, and Han Tong and twenty young men immediately dispersed, surrounding Zhao Kuanyin. Chai Zongxuan looked at Zhao Kuanyin and smiled, saying. Zhao Aiching is incredibly brave and majestic. I am worried that these young men may be too timid to exert all their might. Therefore, I just said that if so many people still cannot beat you, they will be imprisoned. In a moment, let's move our hands. If they lose the weight of their move, please don't blame Zhao Aiching. Zhao Kuangyin was slightly surprised when he saw the cold eyes of the crowd surrounding him just now. At this moment, when he heard Chai Zongxuan's words, he felt relieved. It seems that the little emperor has a strong competitive heart. If I take action soon, I won't hurt these children. On the surface, just a draw is enough. Zhao Kuangyin respectfully said, Your Majesty, rest assured that I have been on the battlefield for a long time, and I understand the severity of my actions. I will never harm these children. Chai Zongxuan smiled slightly and sat down on the throne, patting his hands three times before saying, Let's start the martial arts competition. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Palace Shock. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Palace Shock. Upon hearing this, Han Tong, Zhang Yong, and twenty other young men immediately attacked Zhao Kuanyin from all directions. Zhao Kuangyin, who was at the core, felt a murderous aura emanating from all around him. Han Tong and others were extremely ruthless, with all their moves attacking the vital parts of his body. Zhao Kuangyin immediately, like an instinctive reaction, showed his true skills of life and death for decades. His body was as agile as a god, retreating and dodging like a fox in the mortal world, never being surrounded by others. Most of his energy was focused on Han Tong, with only a small portion of his energy to cope with the crazy attacks of twenty teenagers. Many young men desperately attacked Zhao Kuanyin, but were easily knocked out by him with either fists or feet. Fortunately, Zhao Kuanyin hesitated in his heart. At this moment, he still hadn't thought that Chai Zongxuan wanted to kill him. He thought that these young men were afraid of Chai Zongxuan's strict orders and afraid of losing the martial arts competition and being imprisoned, so he fought to the death. Chai Zongxuan sat on his throne, attentively watching the duel in the hall. For over a quarter of an hour, as Zhao Kuanyin had not yet taken down the assassin, the space for him to move was gradually becoming smaller and smaller, compressed by twenty young men including Han Tong and Zhang Yong. Although the twenty teenagers still couldn't get close to Zhao Kuanyin, Han Tong's martial arts skills were not far from Zhao Kuanyin's. After this battle, they finally seized the opportunity to attack Zhao Kuanyin close. Without any hesitation, Han Tong immediately took out the short sword hidden in his sleeve with his right hand and used his moves to attack various vital parts of Zhao Kuanyin's body. Zhao Kuanyin immediately noticed the cold light of the short knife in Han Tong's hand, and was greatly shocked. He quickly dodged while cursing Han Tong. Han Tong, how dare you carry weapons in front of your majesty. This is a capital offense. 
Han Tong remained silent with a fierce expression on his face, and his move was a complete sacrifice, regardless of whether he was injured or not. Zhao Kuanyin's first sense of danger rose in his heart, and now he was the first to save his life. He sought an opportunity to take out a short sword from his cowhide boots, hoping to break out of the encirclement of Han Tong and others as soon as possible and escape from the Xingwu Hall. However, Han Tong was also a hundred battle veteran in the Zhou army, with astonishing martial arts skills. Coupled with the relentless pursuit of twenty young men, it was difficult for Zhao Kuanyin to break through the siege. At this moment, Zhao Kuanyin was no longer lenient in his actions, and his moves were all killing. More than ten young men had already been killed or seriously injured by him in one move in front of him. After dozens of moves, Zhao Kuanyin saw Han Tong with red eyes and a sharp knife piercing his chest, disregarding his own injuries. With a thought in his heart, his body rushed out to the right and swung his sword, lightning cutting at Han Tong's right arm holding the knife. Han Tong gritted his teeth and did not retract his arm to dodge the instructions from Emperor Chai Zongxuan just now. With a flick of his wrist, his short sword had pierced Zhao Kuanyin's flank, piercing his soft armor and penetrating his flesh about an inch. Almost at the same time, Han Tong screamed in agony. Zhao Kuanyin's short sword had hit Han Tong's right arm bend, blood splattered, and almost the entire arm's armor was cut off, leaving only a little flesh connected. In the midst of lightning and fire, Zhang Yong took advantage of the moment when Zhao Kuanyin was injured by a knife and his whole body was paralyzed. He quickly stabbed Zhao Kuanyin's back with a short knife. Zhao Kuanyin felt strong energy behind him and couldn't pull out the short sword that had been cut into Han Tong's right arm to resist Zhang Yong's attack. He had to release the short sword and dodge to the side. He forgot that Han Tong's right hand, which was almost cut off, was still tightly gripping the short knife that pierced into his side, and this tiny difference affected his speed and evasion distance. When Zhao Kuanyin cried out in his heart, Zhang Yong had already stabbed his right back with a knife. Zhao Kuanyin let out a loud cry, and his flying foot flew backwards with lightning, hitting Zhang Yong's chest. With a loud bang, Zhang Yongling vomited blood and threw it backwards. Zhao Kuanyin reached out and pulled out the two short knives inserted into his side and back one by one. He lifted his left foot and kicked Han Tong, who had fainted from the pain, away. He clenched his fists tightly and turned around, strode towards Chai Zongxuan sitting on the throne. Good you dog emperor. In vain, I have been loyal to you, and today I am planning to harm you. Today I will send you on the road to meet the late emperor. Under the wrath of Zhao Kuanyin, he had no choice but to immediately kill Chai Zongxuan and seize the throne ahead of schedule, disregarding the fact that he had not yet fully controlled the imperial guards and the guide army. Chai Zongxuan stood up from the throne in shock, feeling anxious. The poison on Zhao Kuanyin's body has not yet broken out. Is it because Tang Chi is unreliable and has used fake poison? Or has he even defected to Zhao Kuanyin? Immediately after the screen, ten young eunuchs holding swords flashed, nervously blocking Chai Zongxuan's body. Chai Zongxuan was afraid of mobilizing the imperial army to ambush the palace, which made it easy for Zhao Kuanyin to see through his plan to eliminate him. Therefore, in the past ten days, Tang Chi carefully selected ten eunuchs who were agile and slightly skilled in martial arts to protect him. Zhao Kuanyin was furious and pointed his halberd at Chai Zongxuan, saying. Dog Emperor, do you think with your ten eunuchs, you can block the iron fist of this general? Chai Zongxuan's heart turned sideways, disregarding life and death, and he shouted. Zhao Kuanyin, do you also dare to call yourself a loyal minister? Your father elevated you to a humble position, and before your death, he even promoted you to be the chief inspector in front of the palace, entrusted with important responsibilities. But what about you? In my Zhou dynasty's forbidden army, I won the hearts of the people and formed the Ten Brothers of the Righteous Society. I conspired with your brother Zhao Kuanyi and strategist Zhao Pu to seize power and seize the throne. Is this how you repay your father's great kindness? You came to see me, but there are hidden weapons around you. 
You're not trying to rebel. What is it Zhao Kuanyin did not expect that Chai Zongxuan, as a seven-year-old child, could speak so clearly? However, with Chai Zongxuan's words, he couldn't help but recall the trust and responsibility that Zhou Shizong had placed in him during his lifetime. Zhao Kuanyin sighed and said, The late emperor was indeed not lenient towards my general, and I always forget him. If the late emperor were present, I would be willing to be a permanent general, to conquer the south and north, and unify the world. But now that the late emperor has passed away, Guozongxuan, you are a seven-year-old child. In this era of great turmoil, strong enemies surround you, with northern Han and Khitan strongholds in the north, southern Tang in the south, and later Shu in the west. General, I can't bear to see my foundation destroyed by you, this child. Guozongxuan, as long as you immediately agree to the position of Zen master, I will not kill you today. I will cherish you for a lifetime. Zhao Kuanyin couldn't help but feel a bit resentful when he thought about the kindness that Emperor Shizong of Zhou, Chai Rong, had towards him. In the blink of an eye, he realized that if he killed Chai Zongxuan now, his plan had not yet been completed, and his qualifications and reputation were insufficient, he was afraid it would trigger the Great Zhou Rebellion. It is likely that the whole country will once again fall into war and turmoil. It would be safer to have Chai Zongxuan pass an edict to abdicate to himself. Zhao Kuanyin took a step and attacked Chai Zongxuan, hoping to hold him back first. Just as he took two steps, his majestic body shook slightly. Upon seeing great joy, Chai Zongxuan, who was extremely nervous in his heart, immediately ran behind the screen and shouted loudly to the main hall. Zhao Kuanyin has been stabbed by Han Tong and Zhang Yong with a poisonous knife, and is about to be poisoned to death. All the beloved ministers should quickly entangle him. I will never forget your contributions, glory and wealth are right in front of me. At this moment, the Xingwu Hall was still able to move. Upon hearing this, the six slightly injured martial arts practitioners charged towards Zhao Kuanyin with their remaining strength and fought fiercely with ten eunuchs, forming a group. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Punish Zhao Kuanyin You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Punish Zhao Kuanyin Chai Zongxuan hid behind the screen and looked into the hall, only to see that although Zhao Kuanyin's fists and feet were full of power, his movements clearly slowed down. Six young martial arts practitioners and ten eunuchs were fighting around Zhao Kuanyin, able to dodge his powerful fists and feet. Zhang Yong is the top martial arts practitioner among young men. He endured the pain and took the opportunity to cut several wounds on Zhao Kuanyin's body with a short knife. After a moment of fighting, Zhao Kuanyin's toxicity completely erupted and he regretted it deeply. I never expected that the seven-year-old emperor would dare to suddenly challenge himself through a martial arts competition, otherwise he wouldn't be able to come to the palace late at night to make an appointment. Zhao Kuanyin was originally hesitant about seizing the throne of the great Zhou dynasty. However, under the constant encouragement of his younger brother Zhao Kuanyin and strategist Zhao Pu, as well as Shi Shoshin and others, he began planning to seize power on the way back to the capital due to Emperor Shizong's urgent illness. The so dot called suspicion of the country over the country is not only the cause of Zhao Kuanyin's ambition to seize the throne, but also the key point of Zhao Kuanyin's defeat today. I can't believe that Lord Xiao is indeed Xiao at the age of only seven, but his power and strategy are comparable to the Ming dynasty in history. Zhao Kuanyin felt a wave of haggard in his heart. After shaking his body a few times, his eyes turned black and he couldn't stand any longer. He collapsed on the floor of the palace with a loud thud. Chai Zongxuan was overjoyed and immediately ran out from behind the screen, shouting, hurry up and tie Zhao Kuanyin up. Ten eunuchs quickly ran to the equipment placement area of the Xingwu Hall, took out a large bundle of cow tendons and hemp ropes, and ran back, firmly tying Zhao Kuanyin's entire body several times. Chai Zongxuan turned his eyes and saw Han Tongyu fainting on the ground, with blood flowing all over his severed arm. Chai Zongxuan quickly said to the ten eunuchs, Quickly go outside the palace and pass on my decree to Duke Tang. 
Zhao Kuanyin has been ambushed. Immediately lead Vice Commander Han's subordinates to the Forbidden Army, encircle inside and outside, and completely kill the 300 followers brought by Zhao Kuanyin. At the same time, quickly send someone to invite the Imperial Physician to treat the wounded in the palace. After ten eunuchs bowed, they turned around and ran to the entrance of the palace. Together, they opened the door and ran out. Chai Zong Zunya didn't want Han Tong to die here and said to Zhang Yongdao, Ai Qing has made great contributions today. Quickly think of a way to help Han Ai Qing stop the bleeding from her wound. Zhang Yong has traveled to all corners of the world since childhood. At the age of ten, he had killed bandits and had extensive experience in the martial arts world. He quickly walked over to Han Tong's side and tightly tied his right broken arm with a cloth strip, gradually stopping the bleeding. Tang Chi, who was waiting outside the palace, immediately shouted to Zhao Kuanyin's subordinates after receiving a decree from the eunuch. Zhao Kuanyin concealed a powerful weapon and attempted rebellion, but has now been executed by His Majesty. You are my soldiers of the Great Zhou Forbidden Army, and I pledge allegiance to Your Majesty. Those who immediately drop their weapons and surrender will be held accountable. If you resist, it is all rebellion, and there is no forgiveness for killing. Upon hearing the news of the three hundred trusted guards of Zhao Kuanyin, the crowd became agitated. Deputy Commander Shi Shoshin shouted loudly, the emperor plotted to assassinate the minister. Zhao Jianjian's martial arts are unparalleled, how could he be easily executed by the little emperor? Brothers, quickly follow me to enter the Xingwu Palace and rescue Zhao Jianjian. Amidst the sound of choking, over a thousand forbidden soldiers under Han Tong and three hundred trusted forbidden soldiers under Zhao Kuanyin drew their swords and drew their swords, and the two sides engaged in a bloody battle. Both sides were elite, after all, Chai Zongxuan's side, who was mentally calculating but not mentally prepared, was well prepared. With more than three times the strength, the situation quickly revealed that Zhao Kuanyin's side was invincible. Shi Shoshin waved his long sword non dot stop and killed more than ten enemy soldiers. He only hoped that Zhao Kuanyin, who had unparalleled martial arts skills, would quickly appear at the palace gate, and together they would break out of the encirclement and make plans after breaking through the palace. Chai Zongxuan wiped the cold sweat off his forehead and sat down satisfied in the center of the throne in the palace. He instructed the martial arts practitioners to fetch water and splash it, awakening Zhao Kuanyin. As soon as Zhao Kuanyin woke up, he immediately realized that he had been tightly bound all over his body, and several young men's short swords were even placed around his necks. Zhao Kuanyin glared at Chai Zongxuan with a piercing gaze and shouted angrily. Vertical son! How dare you kill me! I am the minister entrusted by the late emperor. Chai Zongxuan burst out laughing a few times and rebuked. Your brothers have always been ungrateful and have ulterior motives. On the way back to the south, the wooden plaque that father and emperor picked up, check and be the son of heaven, is the act of the two of you. The father emperor became suspicious of Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin, who were relatives of the imperial family. He dismissed them as military governors and promoted you to be the chief inspector in front of the palace. But what about you? Without any loyalty to my father, the emperor, or to my great Zhou. Seeing that I was young, I harbored malicious intentions and arranged for my confidence in the Forbidden Army and the Guide Army, buying people's hearts and attempting to usurp power. Everyone says, Master, the country is doubtful. Today, I will establish my authority by killing you too, making everyone know that I am the Holy Emperor of China for generations. Chai Zongxuan, who has traveled through time and is only seven years old, seems to have emerged before his eyes the magnificent scene of the Song Dynasty's history, which completely changed the turning point of China's decline under his rule, and the conquest of the world by the Zhou Dynasty's iron hooves. Zhao Kuanyin angrily said. The vertical ruler slandered me. I reorganized the Forbidden Army and the Guide Army to resist enemy invasion. How can we say it's a rebellion? How dare you kill me? If I have an accident, both the German army and half of the Forbidden Army will mutiny. 
you won't be able to escape death then. Chai Zongxuan smiled and said, Zhao Kuanyin, you are the most aware of your conspiracy. Are you discussing finding a suitable time to falsely spread the military situation of the invasion of Han and Khitan, and seize the opportunity to capture all the Forbidden Army and the Guide Army? And then launch a mutiny to seize the throne? Zhao Kuanyin, I don't need you to worry about the Zhou Forbidden Army and the Guide Army. I have urgently ordered Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin to sneak back to the capital. His reputation in the military is probably still far above yours, isn't it? As long as I kill you, your younger brother and those followers are only a minority among military officers. What can we do upon hearing this? Zhao Kuangyin's face turned pale. He was only over thirty years old, and although he was highly promoted by Emperor Shizong of Zhou, his reputation and qualifications in the Zhou army were still shallow. Compared to Li Zhongjin, who was in his fifties and had been in the army for a lifetime, Zhang Yongda, who was in his thirties but had already become a senior general, still lacked much appeal. Even compared to Han Tonglai, the deputy commander of the Forbidden Army who was in his forties and had served in the military for thirty years, his qualifications were much lower. At this moment, Zhao Kuanyin was secretly surprised by Chai Zongxuan's young age, yet so far sighted. Zhao Kuanyin pleaded, Your Majesty, I have been entrusted by the late emperor to be an orphan and have always been loyal to your majesty and the state of the Zhou dynasty. I beg your majesty to spare my life, and I am willing to return to the fields after being released from my armor. If there are no ministers, the northern Han and Khitan Iron Cavalry will soon invade our great Zhou. Chai Zongxuan said fiercely. Your father, the emperor, has placed great trust in your cultivation, and you even want to seize my throne. I will not only kill you, but also your younger brothers Zhao Kuangyi, Zhao Pu, and others, and execute the nine clans. I will execute your trusted generals, such as the Ten Brothers of the Righteous Society, and others. Zhao Kuangyin was so angry that he spat out a mouthful of blood. Knowing that he must have no luck, he pointed his halberd at Chai Zongxuan and said, Hello Ruthless. Without me, Zhao Kuangyin, the heavens would surely perish, Zhou. Chai Zongxuan sighed and said, I didn't want to take such a harsh action against you. But considering your brother's insidious and cruel behavior, I think it would be more beneficial for our Chinese society to have all nine tribes executed. As for the threats from enemy countries such as Han, Khitan, and Tang, you don't need to worry too much. After removing you, I will handle them properly. Zhao Kuanyin, you can set off with peace of mind. Go and serve the late emperor under the Nine Springs. Chai Zongxuan looked at Zhang Yong and other young men and said, Zhao Kuanyin is plotting rebellion. Immediately behead and proclaim to the army. Upon hearing this, Zhang Yong and others immediately walked forward with their short swords, and after several cuts, Zhao Kuanyin, who had already fallen into a coma due to anger, was killed. They then beheaded him. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Control of the Capital you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Control of the Capital Zhang Yong carried Zhao Kuanyin's first book and, together with several eunuchs and martial arts practitioners, opened the gate of the martial arts hall and walked out. At this time, the fierce battle between the thousand imperial guards ambushed by Han Tong outside the palace and the three hundred imperial guards brought by Zhao Kuanyin had lasted for two and a half minutes. As Zhao Kuanyin had not yet left the palace, Shi Shoshin and his confidants were unable to seek a breakthrough and had to fight hard. More than a hundred people had already died on the spot. Zhang Yong raised Zhao Kuanyin's head high and shouted sternly. Zhao Kuanyin plotted rebellion and secretly hid a weapon to assassinate His Majesty, but has now been executed by His Majesty. Your Majesty orders you to immediately lay down your weapons and be captured, which will pardon you for your death penalty. You are all brave warriors of the Zhou dynasty's forbidden army. Your imperial grace is magnificent, how can you rebel against Zhao Kuanyin? Upon hearing this, Shi Shoshin and Zhao Kuanyin's confidants, the imperial guards, saw that Zhang Yong was indeed holding the head of Zhao Kuanyin, 
causing a great uproar. After all, these soldiers have always been the imperial guards of the Zhou dynasty. During the reign of Emperor Shizong of Zhou, he only knew how to be loyal to the Zhou dynasty. Even after his death, he helped Xiao Kuanyin gather connections. However, those who participated in the conspiracy to seize power and seize the throne by Zhao Kuanyin were only a few of his confidants, and most of the soldiers were just those who followed the trend. At this moment, seeing that Zhao Kuanyin was already dead, under the majesty of Emperor Chai Zongxuan, half of the people gradually threw down their weapons and bound themselves. Shi Shoshin was shocked and scolded repeatedly, trying to prevent his soldiers from surrendering. However, his defeat was like a mountain collapsing, and with his authority, it was of no use. Shi Shoshin knew that the situation had passed, and it was crucial to save his life at the moment. He immediately wielded his sword and attacked the southwest corner of the encirclement, leading the remaining less than a hundred people in an attempt to break through and escape. However, Han Tong carefully selected a thousand elite members of the Forbidden Army, and after half of Zhao Kuanyin's rebel forces surrendered, the number of them was eight times higher. Under heavy siege, in less than a cup of tea time, nearly a hundred loyal soldiers of Zhao Kuanyin, including Shi Shoshin, who refused to surrender, were all killed by a thousand imperial guards. The eunuch in front of the palace, Tang Chi, ordered the soldiers of the Forbidden Army to take prisoners. After clearing the corpses on the ground, he quickly walked into the palace, only to see Emperor Chai Zongxuan collapse like cotton on the throne. Tang Chi was startled and quickly reported to Chai Zongxuan sitting on the throne. Your Majesty, all the rebels brought into the palace by Zhao Kuanyin have been eradicated. His righteous brother, Deputy Commander Shi Shoshin, failed to break through and died by the sword. Chai Zongxuan nodded and wanted to stand up, but after experiencing the palace upheaval just now, he was extremely scared and his whole body was uncontrollable, limping and unable to exert any strength. Chai Zongxuan spoke up and said, Tang Donggang, quickly send someone with Zhao Kuanyin's head to contact the two generals Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin who are ambushed outside the capital. Zhao Nai has been executed by me, and generals Zhang and Li naturally know how to handle it. My decree is to appoint Zhang Yongda as the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Guard and Li Zhongjin as the commander-in-chief of the Guide Army, to immediately take control of both armies and uproot the power of the rebel Zhao Kuanyin in the army. Those who resist will be killed without mercy. The rest of us will be imprisoned and dealt with later by me. After Tang Chi agreed, he immediately turned around and left the hall to arrange. In no time, six imperial doctors, led by two eunuchs, rushed to the Xingwu Hall. After seeing Emperor Chai Zongxuan, they immediately rescued Han Tong and more than ten martial arts practitioners lying in the blood pool inside the hall. Chai Zongxuan glanced at Han Tong, whose face had turned pale due to excessive bleeding from his severed arm, and was moved in his heart. Fortunately, Han Dian has been loyal to our Zhou royal family since the time of Emperor Taizu. He has made great contributions this time, and it can be said that I rely entirely on his loyalty and bravery. I hope that with Han Tong's long experience on the battlefield, he can overcome this calamity. This person is loyal and courageous, and it would be most appropriate for him to serve as the checkpoint in front of the palace. Mother, I'm afraid I've heard about this matter. I still have to go and comfort her. Turning his head to see Zhang Yong sitting on the ground coughing and spitting blood, with a slightly lighter injury, Chai Zongxuan thought to himself. Zhang Yong is also a rare talent. Although he is young, he still lives up to the reputation of a ranger, much more capable than Qin Wuyang and others. Fortunately, he was bold and meticulous just now, with extraordinary courage and strength, and he stabbed Zhao Kuanyin from behind. Otherwise, Zhao Kuanyin's toxicity is not severe enough and his attacks may not be as fast. These ten eunuchs may not be his opponents, and my life or death is only on the line. After a while, the muscle tension on the body was uncontrollable and finally disappeared. Chai Zongxuan stood up from his throne and looked at the grand physicians, saying. Ladies and gentlemen, the injured people in this hall are all loyal and brave individuals of my great Zhou dynasty and my trusted confidants. 
you must do your best to save them. I have many rewards. All the eunuchs saluted, and Chai Zongshuan, accompanied by several eunuchs, walked out of the main hall. After the bloody battle, he was escorted by the remaining 800 trusted imperial soldiers of Han Tong, and walked towards the Baozi Hall of Empress Dowager Fu under the shining lights. Halfway through, 8,000 imperial guards guarding the imperial palace of Chai Zongshuan were summoned to join forces. About ten minutes later, the group arrived near the Baozi Hall and saw that the main hall was densely guarded by about 8,000 forbidden troops arranged by Han Tong. After confirming that it was the emperor and his entourage, the captain of the imperial guard guarding the Baozi Hall's tense expression eased, and after bowing, he ordered his soldiers to give way. Chai Zongshuan nodded and looked around at the forbidden army, saying, You are all loyal and brave people of my great Zhou dynasty. After I have determined the overall situation, you will be promoted and wealthy, and each of you will be indispensable. Upon hearing this, the soldiers were filled with joy and saluted in unison, May I die for your majesty. Chai Zongshuan nodded in satisfaction and walked into the hall with a smile on his face. Empress Dowager Fu was anxiously sitting on the throne of the Jade Pavilion when she saw Chai Zongshuan enter the palace. She breathed a sigh of relief and waved, saying, Sunner, come over quickly. Chai Zongshuan quickly approached and had just bowed to Empress Dowager Fu when she had already pulled him up. After carefully examining Chai Zongshuan, Empress Dowager Fu happily embraced him in her arms. Sunner, the Empress Mother heard that you have already killed Zhao Kuanyin in the Xingwu Palace. Great! Great! The Emperor's son is unharmed, and the mother's suspended heart has been put back to its original place the mother and son sighed for a while, and Chai Zongshuan briefly explained the process of removing Zhao Kuanyin from the martial arts palace, saying, Mother, rest assured that with the prestige of Zhang Yongda and Li Chengjin far surpassing Zhao Kuanyin in the military, and that Zhao Kuanyin has already been executed by me, the rest are not worth considering. Apart from Zhao's followers, there will be no difference. Empress Dowager Fu exclaimed with joy, My son is well behaved and unexpected. He has the aura of your father, Emperor Ying Ming, and Shen Wu. I have successors in the state of Dazhou. Chai Zongshuan smiled and said, To be honest with my mother, since the last time my father instructed me in a dream, I only felt like I suddenly had an epiphany. I could easily understand the essence of the court affairs at a glance. At present, the Empress Dowager and her courtiers patiently wait in the Baozi Palace guarded by loyal and righteous people, waiting for Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin to take control of the situation in the capital. In the future, Empress Dowager can rest assured to let her courtiers take charge of politics. Empress Dowager Fu thought of the palace upheaval, which was orchestrated by Chai Zongshuan. Although it seemed risky, it was actually a seamless and meticulous plan, making it difficult for Zhao Kuanyin to detect and defend himself. His actions were extremely powerful. Empress Dowager Fu was originally a courtesan who grew up in a fragrant boudoir from a young age and had no political genius. After the death of Emperor Sejong, she often felt powerless to govern from the sidelines for several months. Today, seeing Chai Zongshuan, who was only seven years old, calmly removing General Zhao Kuanyin who was holding a heavy army, Empress Dowager Fu couldn't help but feel extremely surprised and satisfied in her heart. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Consort Zhang Yongda You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Consort Zhang Yongda Empress Dowager Fu nodded and said, Your son is intelligent and wise, with your father's divine and martial spirit. Zhao and I will be eliminated immediately. Your mother will assist you in governing for a period of time during the court, and you will be the one to make decisions on future court affairs Chai Zongshuan, knowing his mother, had already agreed to this matter 80-90% to 90 of the time. As long as he was politically and legally compliant in the future, his mother would be confident in completely handing over the power to him. Chai Zongshuan said, Mother, please rest assured. I will definitely manage my affairs well and not let down my father's reputation. Mother, the situation in the capital and imperial palace is chaotic now. 
We are waiting in this palace with peace of mind for Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin to take control of the situation. The mother and son sat in the palace chatting for a while, and Empress Dowager Fu asked. Huang Er, Zhao Kuangyin will be eliminated immediately. Is it really safe to let Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin take charge of the Imperial Guard and the Guide Army? On the day of your father's sudden death, Prime Minister Fan Ji, Deputy Prime Ministers Wang Pu, Wei Ren Pu, and others in the court demoted these two individuals to local governors on the grounds of stabilizing our Zhou imperial power, fearing that their prestige in the military would be too high and they would have ulterior motives Chai Zongxuan smiled and said, Mother, Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin are both royal relatives of our Zhou royal family, with high titles and titles. There is no need to question their loyalty to our royal family. My son, these prime ministers in the court have all lost their heads and are guarding against the wrong person. At that time, Zhang and Li held the two most elite armies of our dynasty, the Imperial Guard and the Guide Army, but immediately obeyed the dispatch, which further proved their loyalty. However, the mother's concern for the generals is also right, and the courtiers have figured out a way to control them Empress Dowager Fu was very interested and immediately began to inquire. After pondering for a moment, Chai Zongxuan said. The reason why the imperial court is unable to satisfy the public's expectations is twofold. Firstly, the Chinese officials and generals in the court believed that Wei Renpu, the second prime minister, was from a humble background and had not participated in the imperial examination, which was insufficient in terms of talent, believing that Fan Ji and Wang Pu would only follow the rules and regulations, I also believe that Han Tong has courage but no strategy. Secondly, the Forbidden Army marched towards the most elite army in our Zhou dynasty, following our father in both the north and south, and achieved great success through hard work. However, after the death of his father, Prime Minister Fan Ji implemented many measures to restrict the military and stabilize the court in order to suppress the power of generals. He also lowered the salaries of soldiers from 1200 to 801 per month. Therefore, the hearts of the Forbidden Army fluctuated and they harbored dissatisfaction. After being a mother, the father emperor was wise and powerful. During his reign, he vigorously promoted economic development and increased fiscal revenue. After several years of accumulation, the national treasury was quite abundant. A few days ago, I learned that there are currently more than 22 million tails of tax and silver in the national treasury, in reality, two tails are used in writing. The method of the courtiers was to first remove the second prime minister, Pu, who had a secret communication with Zhao Kuanyin, and entrust him to the three departments for deliberation. A highly respected minister was elected by the various ministers of the court and appointed as the deputy prime minister. Fan Ji is loyal and can stay on. The second item. Increase the monthly salary of all soldiers in the Forbidden Army from the current reduced 801 to 125 qian. These soldiers have a worry-free life and are enough to support their families, so they must be loyal to my royal family. Empress Dowager Fu exclaimed with joy, Your son is truly new compared to before. It seems that your father, the Emperor, entrusted you with a dream and enlightened you. The emperor's approach directly targets the key points, which is indeed feasible when Chai Zongxuan accompanied Empress Dowager Fu to stand guard in the Baozi Palace, Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin, who were ambushed outside Bianjing, received a secret order from Emperor Chai Zongxuan and led their own troops to rush into the city. They took advantage of the late night to launch a surprise attack, surrounded and killed Zhao Kuanyin's party, and took control of the Imperial Guards and the Guide Army. At night, there was a great chaos in the capital city of Bien, and we could hear the sound of weapons handover and shouting. After all, Zhao Kuangyin's trusted generals were only a few compared to the entire Forbidden Army and the Guide Army. Rumors spread throughout the capital that Zhao Kuangyin had been executed and the emperor had issued an order to suppress the Zhao clan, causing panic among the people. Under the historical military prestige of Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin, most neutral and watchful soldiers immediately obeyed their orders. Zhao Kuanyi and Zhao Pupu, the ten brothers of the E Society of Zhao Kuanyin, hesitated for a long time as no news of Zhao Kuanyin returned. 
The situation started hastily, and it wasn't until midnight that they were surrounded by Zhang and Li's army at their respective residences that they suddenly realized the situation had changed dramatically. After fierce resistance, Zhao Kuanyi and others were outnumbered, either killed in battle or captured, and were soon suppressed by Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin. Zhao Kuanyin, a trusted general in the front of the imperial palace, heard at first glance that Zhao Kuanyin had been executed by Emperor Chai Zongxuan and had formed a chaotic group. Although many generals wanted to lead the imperial army to attack the Baozi palace, their prestige was far inferior to that of Zhao Kuanyin. In the situation where Zhao Kuanyin was already dead, only a few loyal followers followed and attacked the Baozi palace several times, all of which were repelled by the imperial army of the Han Tong faction guarding outside the palace. On the early morning of November 26 in the sixth year of the Xianda reign, Zhang Yongda and Li Zhongjin, who had already taken control of the situation in Bianjing, rushed to the palace with Zhang Yongda and his 50,000 guards, quickly quelling the rebellion of several thousand remaining members of Zhao Kuanyin throughout the palace. After Tang Qi, the eunuch in front of the palace, reported to Chai Zongxuan, Zhang Yongda was summoned into the Baozi Hall. Zhang Yongda said with great courtesy, I, Zhang Yongda, see the Empress Dowager and His Majesty. I and Commander Li have taken control of the entire capital and swept away the rebellious Zhao rebel party. Ji has executed over 7,000 people. Commander Li is arranging urban defense in the capital to clean up Zhao Ni's hidden wrongdoing Chai Zongxuan and Empress Dowager Fu were overjoyed upon hearing this. Chai Zongxuan knew that in the present Dot Day territory of the Zhou dynasty, all the subjects thought they were young and that all the power was in the hands of the Empress Dowager, who was in power from behind the curtain. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Empress Dowager Fu glanced at Chai Zongxuan and said, Zhang Aiching is flat. The matter of killing Zhao Nian today was all planned by the Emperor and decided after consultation with this palace. Huang Er has been wise and decisive since she received a dream from the previous Emperor a month ago. The Emperor's will is the will of this palace, and Zhang Aiching can obey the Emperor's arrangements in everything upon hearing this, Zhang Yongda was greatly surprised. Zhang Yongda was born in the third year of the Tiancheng era of the later Tang dynasty, 928 AD. When Guo Wei, the founder of the later Zhou dynasty, was a guard, he befriended Zhang Yongda's father Zhang Ying and married his daughter to Zhang Yongda. In the first year of Guangxuan in the great Zhou dynasty, 951 AD, after Guo Wei, the founder of later Zhou, proclaimed himself emperor, he married Zhang Yongda's daughter as the princess of Jin, and appointed Zhang Yongda as the left guard general, the commander of the 4th division of the inner palace, the commander-in-chief of the imperial household, and the governor of Lingyi prefecture. From then on, Zhang Yongda became a trusted imperial relative and national authority in the great Zhou dynasty. In the first year of Xianda, 954 AD, shortly after the accession of Emperor Shizong of Zhou Chai Rong to the throne, Emperor Shizong of Northern Han Lu Chong took the opportunity to collude with the Khitans to invade. Emperor Shizong of Zhou personally marched and fought against the Northern Han army in Gaoping. The battle had not yet begun for long, but later Zhou generals Fan Aineng and He Hui fled and surrendered to the Northern Han with their troops. When the situation was critical, Zhao Kuanyin and Zhang Yongda each led 2,000 soldiers to fight back vigorously. Zhang Yongda's subordinates were skilled in cavalry and archery, and under Zhang Yongda's leadership, they bravely killed the enemy, causing heavy damage to the Northern Han and Khitan allied forces. As a result, they turned the tide of the war and achieved victory in the Battle of Gaoping. They surrendered more than 7,000 soldiers from Lu Chang's army. In the sixth year of the Xianda reign, Chai Rong retreated to Bianjing due to an urgent illness during his northern expedition. He had originally planned to have Zhang Yongda, who had a stable and gentle temperament, continue to serve as the chief inspector in front of the palace. However, a wooden plaque was found in various memorials submitted, which read, Inspector is the Son of Heaven. This made Chai Rong very worried that after his death, the Zhou royal family would have an orphan son and mother, and Zhang Yongda would seize the throne, so he was demoted. More than ten days ago, Zhang Yongda, 
as the military governor of Chanzhou, received a secret order from the imperial palace, thinking that it was the empress dowager who wanted to remove Zhao Kuanyin. He had no idea that it was the seven-year-old emperor Guo Zongxuan who had planned everything. Chai Zongxuan saw the expression of surprise on Zhang Yongda's face that could not be concealed and smiled, saying, Zhang Aiching is a relative of my Zhou dynasty. In terms of seniority, I should call him Uncle Zhang Aiching. Today, Zhao Ni's party has been eliminated, but the world is still at war. Please spare no effort and fully assist me, uncle. End of this chapter